is Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hi. Uh, how, how are you doing? doing? Great. Not really happy to have you here. Um, so let me present you. Daniel Dufour is CIO of uh, GeoSurge. A geospatial technology company with a focus on data compression, natural language processing, remote sensing, and visualization. He created several open source geospatial projects, including geotiff.io, uh, GeoRaster, and GeoRaster Layer for Leaflet. He co created GeoBlaze, a J JavaScript. Uh, raster analysis engine. Be welcome, Daniel. Um, do you have any presentation? Uh, no slides, uh, just all live demos. Um, Great. So I uh, will leave you here. Uh, are you going to share a screen? Yep. Okay, so. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. It's okay, online so already. By my hair, you can tell I've been working on this for the last minute. So fingers crossed, everyone. So um, can you see my screen? Yes, uh, we can see our screen and we are all set. I will okay. leave you now. OK, awesome. Um, so this is uh, GeoBlaze. Uh, it's a JavaScript um, library that allows you to analyze GeoTIFFs. Uh, in our mission, <laughs> we wrote this uh, a long time ago when we were a little more ambitious, but um, it's to make it easier for people to do GIS, um, especially on uh, their own device or um, in, in sort of a cheap way. So um, if you go to geoblaze.io, uh, that's our uh, community website. And um, that's sort of like your uh, go-to spot to start. Um, so you can view the, the source code. Uh, we have a community on GitHub uh, within the GeoTIP organization. Uh, and um, that's the, the good way to engage. And um, you can post an issue there if you find an issue. Um, or uh, you can um, email as well. Um, you have documentation. Uh, and this is a sort of documentation on uh, the different functions available. Uh, and um, we we have uh, observable notebooks that sort of showcase the functionality as well. Uh, and that that's sort of what I'm going to demo today. Um, so uh, here's the first notebook here. Um, this is... Uh, something related to, I think, very important topic, uh, climate change. Uh, and um, what we're doing here is we're uh, loading uh, a series of uh, GeoTIFF files uh, into um, objects that uh, we call GeoRasters. Uh, we can sort of create a canvas to, to actually see the data um, with this to canvas method. Uh, and then we run uh, GeoBlaze's mean function on all of these uh, global temperature rasters. So we're getting the mean temperature uh, for, for each year. Um, yep. So uh, then um, this is just statistics at this point. Uh, Plotly is a, a great library. Uh, you can uh, then um, 
visualize the mean value of the geotiffs and how it's changed over time. And then that's um, uh, using the Plotly library. Uh, you don't need to like remember what this URL is. If you just go to geoblaze.io, you can always uh, find your way back. Um, okay, so let's look at another example. Um, so if you're doing food security analysis uh, and wanted to calculate uh, how much wheat is in uh, a country, um, you can uh, just call the sum function and then pass in uh, the borders uh, for that country uh, as, a, as a polygon. Um, and then it will uh, calculate uh, the sum of the pixel values in that area. In this case, we're passing in the polygon representing the borders of Ukraine. And it is then um, calculating the sum of those pixels, uh, which is a, a wheat, uh, it's a rain fed wheat uh, geotiff. Uh, so then we get the, um, the sum, in this case, the hectares of uh, rain fed wheat uh, in that country. Okay, let's try this one. Uh, this is identifying wildfires. So uh, there's a raster calculator function. Uh, and with it, you can run uh, band arithmetic um, as a JavaScript function. Uh, there is a band arithmetic function, uh, which allows you to uh, write it in the more traditional uh, syntax. Uh, the raster calculator really exposes everything uh, in JavaScript. Uh, and so if you run raster calculator, it will uh, run this function over all your data. And uh, so if it's got a high red value in um, low green and blue, it's just going to uh, return true or return the, the red value. Um, if not, it's just going to return zero. So that's where we see this raster here. Um, it's in grayscale because it's a single dimensional um, raster at this point. You've kind of compressed the red, green, and blue into one dimension, which is whether it's a wildfire or not, uh, or the likelihood of a wildfire. So um, this is a very simple example, but. Um, and uh, there's, we have some notebooks showing um, uh, more complicated uh, algorithms for detecting wildfires. So I invite you to explore that. Um, but just want to keep things simple for this talk. Uh, so if you're uh, looking at uh, socioeconomic statistics, uh, this uh, analysis helps you uh, calculate the um, what World Pop's calling median access to antenatal care in Kigali, Rwanda. Or I'm sorry, they have a geotiff, um, and it's uh, basically the access um, that pregnant women have in Rwanda to medical care. And um, there's a, a geotiff. Uh, well, let's, why don't we edit this so we can see what it looks like. Actually, it doesn't look so great. Um, it's kind of hard to, to really see it, um, but that's, um, so that that's sort of what the GeoTIFF looks like. It seems like access is evenly distributed, um, so. Uh, and so the, the median, uh, value and for their raster for, um, the borders, uh, near, uh, Kigali, the capital, uh, is 0. 0.4. 
and I, I don't remember what that um, that number represents, but uh, it's it's something you would have to know from them uh, and read on the metadata of the geotiff. We also can uh, pull geotiffs from directly from GitHub. Um, this is pulling from Department of Energy. Uh, they um, have some geotiffs on GitHub. Uh, and so you can access the, the raw URL for those geotiffs and then directly um, load those up uh, and, and visualize them. So it's a way to simplify your infrastructure. So you could even, uh, if, if you don't want to have like a server running, but wanted to showcase some geotiffs, you could uh, just store all your geotiffs on GitHub and make Microsoft pay for it. <laughs> and, uh, and then just use um, observable or your own sort of static website to, to visualize these geotiffs. So um, just checking to see if there's any. Um, OK, so let's look at um, in a, a simple example. Really should have started with this one. Uh, but um, should just mention, if anyone has any questions, um, just feel free to, to ask them whenever you want. Okay, we have here one question. Um, does this work well with COGS only loading the data that is required? Uh, yeah, that's a, a great question. Uh, so I am working on it right now and hence the crazy hair. And uh, that should be available um, hopefully by uh, the end of next week. Um, but yeah, the, the, the cloud is coming and um, it, it should be available um, by the end of next week. Interesting. And um, I have a question myself. Sorry if it is too basic. You just uh, ma have mentioned that uh, if we don't have a server to host our image, we could put put it on like a GitHub and then read them. I saw the, the examples when you, you told that. I saw that it was a, a point TIFF images. Uh, does um, this has any limitation on the extension, like would be possible to use a net CDF, for instance? Yes, um, that, uh, that's uh, an excellent question. Um, so uh, GeoBlaze uh, uses the GeoRaster library um, and the GeoRaster library currently does not support net CDF, um, but we're looking at uh, figuring out how we can add that support to uh, GeoRaster. Um, we're in the middle of a, a big re-architecture right now, and um, hopefully within the next month or two. Um, it's been three years, <laughs> so uh, no promises. Uh, we'll we'll release support for um, uh, JPEG and PNG in in ASCII grid uh, in MetaRaster format. And so NetCDF, we've been kind of pushing to the end because that's that's a tough one. Um, I would love if someone who really knows that file format could reach out because um, my impression is that net CDF is not the the points in a net CDF aren't necessarily evenly distributed. Whereas in a GeoTIFF, a JPEG, a PNG, or a, a MetaRaster a format, um, the the points are sort of gridded and they have pixel width and they're evenly distributed whereas in net cdf it's more like sample points um and they could be um you just might not have samples in a certain area and so um i i would just need to 
if, if, if someone can really help me understand that, that'd be awesome. Okay, okay, that's that's fine. Um, we have another question. Does this expect a certain format for COG bands? How much of that can you configure? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So uh, it works with any a number of, of bands. Uh, so uh, let me see if there's an example. Um, so if you run an identify function, it will uh, give the answer um, as uh, as here. Let's let's do an example here, and I'll, I'll show you. Um, so. Uh, Assuming you can still see my screen here. This is the one that we've seen uh, on GitHub. I'm just going to print out the GeoRaster um, because it's got a bunch of data. You know, X min, X max, that's great. So now if we, um, we should have GeoBlaze loaded, great. Uh, so if we run GeoBlaze identify uh, on it and we pass in the GeoRaster and then we have to pass in um, uh, I'm going to reference this previous um, uh, example here uh, to, to how do we identify a single pixel value? So we can see that this is in uh, long, longitude then latitude. Uh, so it's helpful sometimes if one forgets is it latitude, longitude, longitude, or latitude, you know, what the order is, um, you, can, you can see that. Uh, and so we're going to just create a point. Um, why don't we just try to put it uh, somewhere in the middle of the raster? So we can do x max, um, and we're just essentially computing the average of the x dimension, or what's the centroid, uh, and we'll do that um, for um, for the the y dimension too, and get the middle point there. Uh, and then we'll see the identify. Wow, that was fast. Okay, so um, because it's all happening in the client side, you saw that that result just came back really quickly. Um, and in this case, we have four bands. We have an alpha band as well. So red, green, blue, alpha. Uh, you can imagine in maybe if you had like a NDVI thing, you might have an NDVI geotiff, you might have a near infrared band as well. Uh, and so it just gives you the location um, uh, the values at that location for all the bands. So you would just need to know what each band means. But uh, here, the red bands, 247, in the middle of the image. Um, and then the green, 255, blue, 246, and then the alpha bands, 255. So we can imagine that, I guess, the middle is kind of a, a, a white uh, pixel. So that's why those values are so high. But it can work on any number of bands. Um, and then as an example, in this image, there's only three bands. So you get uh, three numbers back. Uh, if you have maybe like a sort of mega geotiff of some of the modern satellites and you have 20 bands or something, you, you get 20 numbers back. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Okay, so far no, 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 any other question. But I have one, like, really basic again. What do you think is the 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 limitation? I mean, uh, probably this is uh, uh, what is what was the main idea of the use of this gel blaze? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, that's a, a great question. Um, the, the main uh, usage was that um, I just wanted to make it easier uh, to uh, analyze satellite imagery. Um, I work as a software developer. My friends work as software developers too, or do GIS, and we all do. GIS here or, or, or thinking about it and we just want to make it easier for people, um, including ourselves. So that, that it, 
it, it's just really uh, makes it easier when you can do something in an observable notebook and you don't have to download any software and you can just in four lines of code start analyzing geotiffs. So um, that's what the main motivation. Um, a, another uh, use case is um, uh, food security. Uh, so uh, there's organizations working on food security and um, and uh, for that, you're doing a lot of this similar type of analysis uh, where you're um, like identif like running calculations on how much uh, food is in an area. Um, so uh, I, it, oh, I would like to support that uh, work. So that that is another reason why um, it was created. Nice. I, I just asked it because I presented here a uh, use case of uh, spatial analysis of uh, uh, air pollution affecting health, uh, public health uh, on this COVID situation. And this was developed with a small media press here in Brazil. And during the publication, we, we had this problem. We really would like to publish the, the, the data we was using so people could explore themselves. So it was like, okay, we did all those stuff. It was interesting. Th those are the results, but you, you can play as well uh, if you would like to. And, but we, we realized that it was, wouldn't be possible as a small media press, no, no server. All we got was um, pr presented in a um, tile layer just as visualization. So nice to, to know about Gelblaze. Um, yeah, and that's like an awesome uh, uh, idea and that, that's, uh, that's exactly the sort of thing that, that we wanna support. Um, uh, so I, I wanna give an example of, of a little more because I have a few more minutes, uh, what this could look like. Uh, so this example is integrating GeoBlaze with the GeoRaster layer for Leaflet library. Um, and when you click, it runs an identify. So um, you can imagine if maybe this is like like a water quality map, you'd want to know how what the water quality is in your area. So you'd want to click uh, where you are. So the, this is sort of a simple example here, um, but it, it listens to the mouse click and then it um, runs GeoBlaze Identify in the location of the mouse click. Uh, you can see examples of GeoRaster layer for leaflet. Um, there's not a lot of examples integrating with GeoBlaze. Um, it's more just sort of visualizing it, um, but that is, uh, but, but that's, um, at, under the GeoTIFF organization on GitHub as well. So, um, yep, that's it. But, yeah. Great. Do, then. Do, do we have more time or? Yeah, we still have six minutes. So be, be, feel free to show another use case or comment something is your time don't worry okay so we're going to just do something one should never do live code see if we can make this happen um let's let's see if we can find a geotiff on uh on github uh let's see we had this organization here the so Let's see, we got some tiffs here. Let's see what's looking good. Um, I don't know what this tiff looks like. Um, maybe GitHub could consider um, using uh, GeoRaster layer for Leaflet to visualize some geo tiffs. So we're gonna want to grab the raw URL so we can look into the downloads, uh, and then copy that link address. Uh, go observable and we'll create a new notebook uh, 
fire GeoBlaze. And we want to pin the version. And then we want to load the, um, the data. And then we want to visualize it. A lot going on. Let's see. Um, why don't we try another GeoTIFF? Okay, so there's just something going on with that GeoTIFF. Not not sure what what it was. Um, but yeah, we can um, see uh, these sort of um, GeoTIFFs here. Um, you can. Look at um, the X Men Y Men uh, values, uh, and uh, we can um, why don't why don't we just get the sum of the the pixels? So that's the sum of the pixels across all the bands, uh, and if we wanted to get maybe the minimum pixel value um, there's max uh, okay um, maybe we can I don't know that's uh, there's there's other oh there's histograms too oh wow I'm not sure what that is uh, you blaze. Um, okay, yeah, I forgot. Uh, I'll have to go into the documentation. Uh, and, and see what the histogram documentation is. Okay, let's see. So then we just calculated the histograms. So um, for each band, uh, how many um, pixels uh, there are at zero. So we can see for the red band, uh, there are 54 example, 54 cases where the, the red value is zero. Um, and uh, the, yeah, so then you can see for the different values there. Well, I'll, I'll uh, maybe end it a little early unless there's uh, anything else. Um, I'll also drop into the chat in a minute um, some of these links in my email address as well, in case people have any questions. That's great. Thanks, Daniel. And just a question, uh, this notebook you was using? Yeah. What is uh, yeah, of course. Um, I love love it. Uh, I I don't use it a lot um, right now, but Observable HQ uh, is great um, when you're trying to to share uh, some of your work. Uh, let me go to the yeah. So it's it's great. Um, it's kind of like Python, Jupyter. No it's kind of like Jupyter notebooks, but just in total JavaScript. Um, yeah, uh, not all the libraries, um, work well with observable. Uh, there's, if it's an older library, it might not work great. Um, but, uh, it's, it's worth, if worth trying, um, and seeing if, if that could work for you. Great. Great. Danielle, I will give a try to this observable HQ and, and gel blaze to see if I could solve the, the, the issue I, I, I had with this project. So thank you very much. Um, now we were supposed to have 
our last speaker, Bjork, uh, Bjork Hofling with Mapfish Print, the classic printing component for the back end. But he didn't show up yet, so I will be here um, waiting in case he appears. Otherwise, see you around. Hope you have enjoyed the, the conference.